We're going to talk about Insulate Britain and the protests on Britain's various roads and motorways over the past couple of months or so. Um, I I thought it would be a good idea to do this now that it's all quietened down a little bit, possibly not for very long. I don't know. Um, But it's your opportunity to put your questions and maybe your comments to one of Insulate Britain's leading spokesmen. It's Liam Norton, who joins me me in the studio. Liam, very good to see you. Thank you. now, it's been quite a few months for you in particular. I've been seeing you on various media programmes. Um, what, what just from on a personal level, you've been thrown into this. I mean, obviously, you, didn't, you did it voluntarily, but you've been thrown into this. And it's been quite a... Um, well, you've had your ups and downs, haven't you? Yeah, certainly, yeah. I mean, um, a couple of years ago, I was on uh, building sites, uh, electrician, um, and, um, what happened is I went to some talks and, and started to discover, um, about the climate crisis and became interested in it. Um, and earlier on this year, obviously been involved in, in, in this Insulate Britain campaign. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly been an eventful, uh, few months, um, in terms of being put into the spotlight, you know, I'm just an ordinary bloke. I mean, last week I was on, you know, I was, I was first fixing a job for a mate, you know, so I'm still a normal person um, in that sense. So, yeah, it's definitely been um, a bit of a ride. Have you enjoyed it? Um, I think enjoyed is, yeah, I think parts of it have been enjoyable. It's been visceral, certainly. Um, there's been points where the criticism has been very difficult to take, obviously. Um, we understand that we are, you know, we're playing... Um, we're not we're not playing games here and um and I understand that um so it's been visceral I would say we've been I've yeah it's felt um full we've been living life fully I would say but that's obviously got its ups and downs uh, and, and you you yourself have been um subject to quite a lot of media interest haven't you sort of particularly when it was discovered that you hadn't insulated your own property um were you prepared for all of that sort of thing no, to be honest, the the insulation thing I wasn't prepared for. I think the fir- they actually used two houses. So the first house was, I think they got it from an arrest um, that I'd had a few years back and the address was public and they used that address. But I'd actually moved out of that address in 2019. It was actually a social housing flat. Mm. Um, so I was a tenant. Um, and then the second property, I'm, I, I, I believe it was where I'm staying with my partner um, and... Um, when I moved in with her, um, it wasn't a deal breaker in terms of making sure she had the correct insulation before before I you, moved you in. You had other considerations. <laughs> oh my so, goodness! So um, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we yeah. So um, it's I haven't really wanted to acknowledge that stuff too much, but yeah, I think it has been quite unfair. But you know, it is what it is. I understand um, the way the world works. I understand tabloid journalism. Um, I've put myself into this position, so you know, I've tried to take it on the chin. When when Insulate Britain first started, um, what what was your main objective? Because I always think with campaign groups, surely the main objective is to persuade people, whether it's politicians, whether it's a general public, that you've got right on your side and you recruit supporters to your cause. And I think a lot of the criticism that you've had, I mean, I've made it myself, is that I can't understand how these campaign tactics persuade anybody to your cause. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of examples of history where people haven't necessarily had the public on their side, but they knew that they were right. And I think it's important here to set the scene. So let's look at fuel poverty at the moment. We've got a think tank E3G that say that um, there are, that yearly there's around 9,700 um, deaths because um, elderly people because they can't afford to heat their home. The government's own statistics have said that there are currently 3.2 million households uh, that li- that are fuel poor. That's at least six million people, and you know a few million children that are experiencing unacceptable levels of fuel poverty. Where are the six? richest nation in the world and there are children whose parents have to make that awful decision between putting the heat on and 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 feeding their children properly that's according to the government's own statistics now let's look at the climate is is there a country in the world that doesn't have these problems where i mean no matter i mean you think switzerland is probably one of the richest countries in the world there would be people in switzerland in that position Uh, government cannot eliminate 
all poverty, can it? Well, yeah, well, this is an interesting point. So let's look at the climate, which is, of course, one of the issues that Insulate Britain were talking about. And at the Paris Accord of 2015, there's an article, you can check it out, it's in the conversation, and there wasn't a single scientist that believed that it was possible to stay below 1.5 degrees at the Paris Conference six years ago. Now, we've had six years of people telling us that it's possible um, to keep temperatures below 1.5, and we're even getting people after the failure of COP saying the same thing. Now, I've looked into some of the, we're at 1.2 degrees now, average temperatures. Now let's look at a couple of peer-reviewed um, papers. So if we look at the carbon lag, that, that means that the carbon that we put into the atmosphere now, it takes 10 years to affect climate. Now there's a peer-reviewed paper that expect the carbon lag that we are experiencing today to add 0.75 degrees um, to the average temperature, let's say 0.8, okay, 0.8 to 1. So again, we're already at 2 degrees. Now let's look at the uh, Arctic, which is about to melt, right? The, um, pe all of scientists, the National um, Atmospheric Association in America are saying by 2034, the Arctic is going to melt. Now there's peer review papers that say that that's 0.4 degrees. So, and there are other papers that talk about other effects, soil, um, the carbon in the soil, and also something called global dimmer. But let's not look at those. Let's just look at those two things. That's 2.4 degrees of warming. That's locked in, no matter what we do. That's according to peer-reviewed papers. And there's a paper that says at two degrees, what the consequences are of a two-degree world are one billion people on the move. One thousand yeah. million people on the move. Now, it's, it, it's very apt that we're talking about one billion people being displaced because we've had the tragedy um, uh, yesterday in, 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 in the channel and I've been listening to you Ian over the past few months and you're a conservative commentator but you speak very um, beautifully about the fact that these people they shouldn't be called migrants and they shouldn't be called refugees they're human beings okay mm. now I've just said that 2.4 degrees is locked in no matter what we do and there's papers that say that 1 billion people will be displaced now, that's one billion souls, one billion human beings that you yourself understand have a stories. They have yeah. mothers and fathers and they, that one billion people on the move does not happen in a vacuum. It means war. It means starvation. It means unimaginable horror. OK, and that affects everybody here in the UK. That means the, the breakdown of our society it means the loss of pensions. It means the collapse of our NHS. It means the absolute loss of everything we hold dear, the very fabric of our society. So this is the background of what Insulate Britain are talking right. about. And that's why we're saying to that's why we're disrupting the public in this way. It's one of the reasons. One is because it gets a response from the government. And one is because we want we're crying out to the general public that this is an, an emergency and you no longer be, get to be a bystander in this. It's a binary choice about whether you go into resistance against this evil because the governments of the world know what's going to happen, but they're not doing enough about it to reduce emissions. Right. The reason I haven't interrupted you at all, which I would normally have done uh, in, in that what, <laughs> I'm grateful for minute, the opportunity four minute monologue, <laughs> it is because I think you're attacking the wrong people because this country, I mean, you clearly are not so, a soulmate of this government. I think we can both agree on that. But if you look at the environmental record of this government, it might not be as good as you want it to be. But you compare it with most other countries and they are streets ahead in their approach to the environment in streets ahead of many European countries as well. I think in terms of reducing carbon emissions, we're number two to Sweden and the whole of Europe. So it's not this government that you need to aim your attention at, is it? It's the governments of China, Brazil, India, Russia. They are the ones that if, if you want to get the temperature reduced, that can't be done without their cooperation. Now, you described COP26 as a failure. I think most people would say that's a pretty harsh judgment. It certainly didn't get to where you wanted it to get. So from that point of view, you're right, it was a failure. But I think there were good things that happened at it. But and, 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 what, and China and India actually said a few things and made commitments, which I don't think anybody had expected them to make, but they didn't go far enough. Do you not think that your protest would be better directed at the Chinese embassy or the Indian embassy or the Russian embassy rather 
than the British public. Well, let's look at, for instance, the building site I was on last week. The cable that I used, you know, probably came from China. All the screws, all the bolts, all the um, uh, components of the drills that I use, it all comes from China. So the, the, the things that we use, you know, the computer desks that you're using at the moment, everything mm. that we make and we use is coming from just, China. Just right? on that, yeah, because it's an interesting point. When I, I've just bought a new laptop yeah. and I said, I said, and this is not being anti-Chinese, yeah. it's, it, but I said, I'd quite like to buy a laptop that isn't made in China. Now, I mean, that sounds awful in some ways, but it was it's not directed at the Chinese yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was told, well, good luck with that. Exactly, yeah. Because virtually every laptop that is made now, even if it is assembled elsewhere, all the parts come from China. Yeah. And look, Sir David King, the former chief scientific advisor, has said that what we do in the next three to four years will determine the future of humanity. Now... We have a responsibility in the UK. We started the Industrial Revolution and we have a responsibility in terms of, you know, you're a historian. You you, you write books on prime ministers and, and presidents. You, un- well informed. you understand history very well and, and, and you know about the Industrial Revolution and we started it here. And we have a responsibility and it's about having some honour and some integrity again, which I think you understand. And that's what this is about but also the other thing to say here is that this is part of a global um, resistance movement what we will see is groups like insulate britain popping up all over the world we're seeing it in australia at the moment they they won't in china will they they won't they they might in india they won't in russia because we all know what will happen well well it's easy to say that um things won't happen i mean you know you watch the um tiananmen square uh documentary on the bbc and you know history can flip one way or the other again you you know that history is is written by yeah. the winners but yeah, it could but also you, change you look at a, a female tennis player and what's happened to her when she yeah. made an allegation of sexual assault i mean we know what happens to protesters i mean I, I i accept see it in hong kong yeah i accept it's um <laughs> we're in a difficult position but you, but you, and i i understand could, that you could protest outside the chinese embassy but so far as i'm aware you haven't done we're, we're we're talking about taking responsibility for the uk's emissions and that as a as a british citizen um i'm saying to the british government let's start taking responsibility now but don't you think they have now now it's interesting that when you start these processes of, of trying to deal with the climate such as um home energy what you do by this reduction in 15% of UK emissions are caused by heating the home. This national programme, and there's various ways to do it. Italy are paying 110% grants, so they're paying people to do it, which is an interesting mm. way of doing it. But 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 by 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 getting climate results in this way, reducing 15% of emissions, what we what we see is benefits to society. We see poverty levels improving, we see energy use re- reducing, and we see improvements for the poorest in our society. Society. So there's an interesting correlation between um, let people talk about climate justice, but insulate Britain's um, what we're asking for is a perfect example of how dealing with emissions also deals with the poorest in our society. And we do have a responsibility okay. globally in terms of um, uh, looking after the poorer countries as well. Um, Barry in Manchester says this man has blood on his hands. Stop treating him with such civility. Well, I think the point I would make to you, Barry, is that if we're going to actually have a reasonable debate in this hour, I mean, w- we could have a big Barney. We could we could create a lot of heat rather than light. But does I, I don't think anybody wins from that, particularly you, the listener. So I, I hope we are going to have a civil debate over the next 45 minutes or so. I'm just looking at the time. It's run away with us already. And we're going to come to your calls in a moment. 0345 6060 973 if you'd like to put your questions to Liam from Insulate Britain. It's 90 minutes past eight. LBC. It's
Ian Dale. Text 84850. This is LBC. 22 minutes past eight. James on a tweet says, Ian Dale getting sucked in by this pathetic insulate Britain criminal. It's, it's, it, it's, well, if Liam was a criminal, he probably wouldn't be here. So that's the first thing to say. The second thing is, I'm not getting sucked in by anything. I've made my views on Insulate Britain's protest known over the months and I resign from nothing that I've said. But the point of this hour is to let you hear what Liam says and then you can make your own judgments. It's no no point in me sort of having a just haranguing match, entertaining though that might be for some. Um, I'll leave that to the callers. <laughs> Rob is in Cambridge. Hello, Rob. Oh, hi, yeah. Nice to speak to you, Ian. Hi. Um... I mean, he, he sounds like a nice guy, but, you know, a lot of it, he just sort of... You are speaking to him directly, Rob, so... Oh, right. Oh, hi. Hi, yeah, mate. You, you... Hello, mate. How are you doing? All right. Yeah, not bad. I mean, you know, when are you going to start protesting outside butchers and things? You know what I mean? I mean, the amount of damage that's done don't, to the Don't give him by... ideas, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody I know is trying... I mean, personally, I've traded my car in. I drive a very small car. I've... I'm more or less vegetarian now, and I, you know, and I fly very little. I mean, but, uh, you know, the inside Britain, the way they go about people, I just don't think you're getting people on your side. And especially after the last couple of years that we've had, the country's been brought to its knees, um, you know, by by the Chinese. I mean, the next thing will be, well, they'll be invading Taiwan. I mean, there's, there's bigger things to worry about. And also... Some of these bigger countries, like your, your Chinese and, and Russia, unless you get those on board, you know, we're, we're doing a lot. You know, our government is doing a lot when you compare to other countries, like when you see who's in charge in Brazil and things like that. You should be grateful that you're living where you are. You know, and a lot, a lot of what you say is just, you know, some of it I agree with, but a lot of it just goes over people's heads and it just doesn't resonate with them. OK, Liam. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. I mean, um, yeah, I, I, I accept we're in a, you know, we're in a difficult position um, in terms of public support, um, you know, and, and the kinds of things that you're that, the, that you're discussing. Um, I think what 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 I'd always come back to is this 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 um, this catastrophe that we're in as as a society and as a world. And I think that people understand, people may have some kind of understanding that there's kind of a bit of a problem. But I think what Insulate Britain are, are, are here to do is tell you that actually it's a lot more serious than um, than than politicians and um, various people, in, journalists and people in the media are letting on. And you know we're not we're not censoring anybody no i accept I mean, i'm on fact, here you, now aren't you I? could argue that the media is censoring the climate change skeptics I, because they don't generally interview them anymore yeah i think that's fair i think there's an emotional dissonance in in connecting to average global temperatures of the kinds i've just discussed which i've just said 2.4 degrees is locked in right yeah but you see several people on tweets and texts here are saying look He's a builder. I'll take this from a scientist, but why? Why would I be convinced by a builder? Well, I'm t I'm here to tell. I'm I'm saying that these are peer reviewed papers. I'm not saying they're from me. It was published on uh, the the carbon lag paper was published on the fourth of January by Shen Zhu in in Nature Climate Change, and it says 0 0.75 degrees to one degree C is locked in. There's another you. there's another report that says the Arctic melt, yeah, I know, which you, is locked you, you, in. Yeah, I've said, said it. You've right? said it already. So, so two point four degrees things. is locked in. So this has a catastrophic event effect on the people of this country. What I'm saying to you is your pension will collapse. The the economy I, I, will collapse. And I, I, and what and, and what 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 will what we need to do in terms of um, saying that the UK are doing the worst? Well, that's debatable. But what we need is citizens all around the world. So this is going to happen. This needs to happen in Europe. It needs to happen in America. It needs to happen in South America, and it needs to happen in China. We're talking about change on a historic level that we've never seen before, and the odds aren't good. 
I'm 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 here to accept that the kind of change that we need is not looking good, right? And so that's why the proportionality of what Insulate Britain are doing yeah. is um, justifiable. And what we're saying to society is this. Look, we're sitting oh, on the road. Yeah. We're, we're prepared to go to prison. And what we're saying is hundreds more are going to join us. But, but you, Over the next few years, hundreds just, more are going to join on, us. Just on that. And yeah, just, you, just you've quickly, made your point, though, on yeah, the road, no, just, you? No, but just, just to end, like, what, what I would say is how many hundreds of people non-violent people, ordinary people, can this society see being imprisoned before we start to accept that something drastic needs to, to happen? And society will need to make that decision. And, 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 I, and see, we're think, not going to go think away. society, and, and this account, this isn't just people on the right, this is people all over the political spectrum, think that you've gone too far. They think you've made your point. You've actually been very successful in getting a lot of publicity. Um, and in a way, I, I take my hat off to you when you've got like 10 people can bring the whole of the M25 to a stop. I mean, that has got you a lot of publicity. I would question whether it's always good publicity. Mm. But you've made your point on that now. There is no point in continuing that kind of disruption because people will actually want everyone to go to prison. That, the general public are not going to stand for it, are they, anymore? Well, we've, at, see, we've seen it in some of the protests where people are taking it into their own hands. If the police won't act, they've done it themselves. Well, we've seen a poll by Ipsos Mori that was released yesterday that said climate's now the number one concern for UK citizens. So oh, it's that's rubbish. Well, it's, well, well, it either said that or it didn't, Rob. But, but, I haven't seen the poll, but he's not going to—he's not going to yeah. come into the studio. What the and, number and, one? The number one concern. It's on an I Ipsos. It's, a, it's on an Ipsos Mori poll. Yeah, you oh, can. God, I tell check you it what, out. you've got more. I've never heard so many quotes from people and stuff. I mean, it's just. I'm just an electrician as well. <laughs> The number Where have they all one come concern. from? Oh, yeah. I've, yeah. All, all my mates, when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they think about is climate. I tell you what, you, you, you're from another planet, honestly. Well, you, there's another honestly. poll by, by consumers. I, f I forget oh, the name of the organisation. Yeah. 71% of consumers think that the climate is their, their greatest concern. Okay, and well, people look, with I kids. Li I live in the real world. I've got mates, we run businesses. Yeah. That isn't the first thing we think about. Well, okay. in the real, in the real but world... his aim is to make sure that it is the first thing that you think about, Rob. We're not, we're not stupid, ignorant people. We all try and do our bit, but it's just the way you're going about it. And you're just not bringing people on your side. When, and it's, we're I mean, not asking... And that is a good point, isn't it, Liam, frankly? Yeah. Because what is the point of your campaign if you're not persuading people of your case because I think a lot of people are sympathetic to a lot of what you've said but if you alienate people that there is going to be a backlash yeah I, I, I accept that there's a there's a backlash um, but but we see throughout history that public support isn't necessarily the only governing factor we've seen that in a lot of civil resistance campaigns in the past okay and we're prepared we're 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 we're, we're saying that we're morally right on this and history will prove us right. And and in terms of uh, you live in the real world, well, I can tell you, Rob, in the real world, the Arctic's about to melt, OK? And the Brazilian rainforest is being cut down at an unbelievably catastrophic rate. Now, we don't get to escape that stuff, right? That has a consequence for weather patterns and ultimately what it affects is food, right? And it affects people's ability to live in various regions in the world. And that creates displacement. And that creates all kinds of problems. We're seeing it now. You know, at the moment, we're seeing it. The climate crisis is here today. OK. Right um, now. Just before we go to the news, uh, Ahmed says, is this Insulate Britain representative the same man who walked off Good Morning Britain a month ago after being asked why his own house is not insulated? Well, you and I have something in common here and that we both walked off Good Morning Britain. So there we are. Oh, there. Yeah. I didn't know that you'd it's done that as well. It's quite an experience, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like I, I, would, I was saying before, like the... Um, that the, the house originally that The Sun on Sunday did their article on, it was a social housing home that I was living in that I moved out of in 2019. And I'm currently staying at my, um, you know, with my partner. Um, and, um, you know, there's 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 work that we, we, we all need to do. And look, this isn't about that. What we're saying as well is that the, the, the millions of people that are experiencing fuel poverty in this country are not going to be able to do the work that's required. Individual choice is not going to save us in the time. And the reason for that is what Sir David King is saying, is that what we do 
in the next three to four years will determine the future of humanity. Well, he does say that, and I interviewed him not that long ago, and he also said that he thought the British government's environmental policies were streets ahead of most other countries. But that's not something that you will ever really acknowledge, is it? Well, he's also said um, yesterday that what we need to do, we've got, you know, people are talking about carbon budgets um, as if we've got loads more carbon left to burn. David King is trying to work out how to remove carbon from the air and refreeze the Arctic. And he's talking about reducing carbon back to 350 parts per million because he knows what catastrophe is going to take place over the next 10 years. More from Liam in just a moment. And we'll get to more of your calls. 0345 6060973. It's 8.32. David Dom has the LBC News headlines. The Prime Minister has set out five steps to tackle migrant crossings in the Channel after 27 people died making the journey from France to the UK yesterday. The Home Secretary earlier told MPs the UK has renewed offers to carry out joint patrols with France. A 34-year-old man has appeared in court charged with the murder of a couple stabbed to death at their home in Somerset. Colin Reeves was charged on Tuesday following the deaths of Stephen and Jennifer Chappell in Norton Fitzwarren. Two more energy companies have gone out of business affecting around 70,000 customers. Regulate Ofgem says Entice Energy and Orbit Energy customers will automatically be moved to new suppliers. LBC weather wet and windy in the northwest tonight, mostly clear elsewhere with a low of one. LBC. It's- Leading Britain's conversation. Ian Dale. Tweet at LBC. 8.36 on LBC. Liam Norton from Insulate Britain is here taking your calls. Um, I have to say most of the texts and tweets that I'm getting are not... Uh, supportive of you but I will read out one that is Tom in Guildford says just pass this message on to Liam and just say thank you and carry on fighting the good fight the world will wake up eventually um, Michael is in Isha hello Michael hi I, I listen to 
listen to a lot of the news and read a lot about Insulate Britain, and the one question that I don't think I've heard anybody ask, and it's a, a, a practical question based on human nature and the way governments behave, is that, to my knowledge, governments will never respond positively to the kind of direct action that Insulate Britain are taking. So they're actually counterproductive in the way they're trying to convince people of, of what they want to happen. So the, the government are never going to insulate millions and millions of houses on the basis of direct action because government's views are that if they do, then tomorrow morning every nutcase with a cause is going to glue themselves to a road. <laughs> Do you regard I, yourself as a nutcase with a cause, Liam? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm close. No, I, I, it's I, close I, to I that. wasn't saying that, not, not in this case, because I, I think that probably the statistics are correct, that most people find this problem, the biggest worry today is, is climate. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, look, what, I think you're right in terms of um, direct action, and, and that's why we're talking about non-violent civil resistance. We need a, a critical mass... Of, of people to take part in campaigns like Insulate Britain and we're asking people to join us. So if you're listening to this, please look us up um, online and, 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 and think about joining us. And look, we understand that trying to get change of this kind is incredibly difficult, but it's also non-linear. What that means is you fail, you fail, you fail, you fail, and then all of a sudden you win. OK, and you can look at history in terms of regime changes and um, campaigns. Uh, you know, you look at the civil rights, look at the Freedom Riders and the voters um, campaign in America in the 60s in America. You know, they were they they would they lost for many years, lost, 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 lost. And bang, there's a there's a wave of people that, that, that decide that they're no longer going to take this anymore. And um, they go into classical non-violent civil resistance and amazing things can be done. Change can happen incredibly quickly. That's that's um, if you look at the history books, a, a lot of the time they don't always tell us about um, these amazing things that happen, but they do happen. What do you make of the fact that many green politicians are against what, you, what you're doing? <coughs> <clears throat> Again, I think it's, you know, we're in a... Yeah, I mean, we, we, we're having robust <coughs> debates with um, various people that um, we've in the past campaigned with and they're, they're being critical of Insulate Britain. We accept that there um, there's various ways of looking at this. But look, the, 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 the fact is, is that we, as again, I don't, I don't want to repeat this myself, but three to four years to save the future okay, of our re, children. Don't repeat yourself. We, future we, we, of our children, message, that's what we've got, got you know. But Michael, what, there, there are examples of protests and direct action that have changed policy. Look at the suffragettes, for example. Look at the poll tax riots in, in 1989, 1990. Um, they must have had an effect because the poll tax was abolished within a couple of years, wasn't it? So th there are examples of this working. I think the examples that succeed are those where a very large number of the public agree with the action that's being taken. I think the action that Insulate Britain are taking is not against the government or in favour of a particular climate change action. The, pub the, the, the public see it as an action against themselves, against the public. OK, all right, thank you very much. Let's move on to Phil in Worcester, who's a new caller. Hello, Phil. Yeah, hello. Hi, what would you like to ask? Yeah, hi. I'd just like to yeah ask a question. So, um, so we and, and uh, the, the team <laughs> obviously happy to uh, block the M25, and we know that there's been instances of where um, even called to LBC where his mother was having a stroke, and it has caused death and injury to two people. And I totally get what he's pointed to try and um, you know get the point across about what's going on with climate change. But it goes back to a question you asked a bit earlier, Ian, where um, why are they not outside the Chinese embassy? Why are they not outside the Russian embassy? Is it they're afraid of falling out of tall buildings or just disappearing? I don't know, because they, we are, as you said, we're second best in Europe. We're trying, we're at least trying, and yet the ones who aren't trying or will not cooperate, there is absolutely nothing 
being, you know, from this group to say, OK, let's do something against this. You know, stop the traffic getting to the Chinese embassy or the <laughs> Russian embassy. What, or, about, what, you know, what about, I mean, people gluing themselves to roads. They've been gluing themselves to ambulances, I, I, I saw in, in one paper. Yeah, um, that's that, not true. Well, yeah. there, there was a picture of it, so it is true. I don't think it is. I, I saw it. No. Um, but why don't you go and glue yourself to the Chinese embassy? Surely that, that would have a real impact. And you'd get a lot of people on your side if you did that as well. I might join you. <laughs> In you're 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 a sensible person. You understand that gluing ourselves to the Chinese embassy will not create the kind of change that we need to see in the United Kingdom in order to reduce emissions. And I've said to you, we have a responsibility in this. This is about honour and integrity in terms of we started the industrial revolution yeah, and now we've got but, a responsibility but, but my, to get ourselves point, out of it. My point is that sure, you can try and persuade the British government to do more. You clearly don't think they are doing enough. I'm just saying to you that they're doing more than most other countries. But the countries that aren't doing enough, we all know who they are. And if you wanted to really convert people to your cause, I suspect doing some doing a protest outside the Chinese embassy or the Russian embassy or wherever um, it is going to do your organisation more good in PR terms than it is to inconvenience people on the M25. No, we're, we're here directly talking to Boris Johnson and the UK government and we're saying that they're committing treason upon the people of this country. That's what's going on. And I, and I can't be clearer. It's a strong allegation. Well, it's the truth. Because what's going on is but a just plan... just because you don't agree with somebody, that doesn't mean to say they're committing treason. This isn't about ideology, Ian. OK? This is about a physical reality. I've just said to you what, they, what it is, what's locked in. And they're planning... What they're about planning to do after that joke of a COP conference... Again, they're talking about keeping 1.5 alive. I've just said two papers that just say that is complete nonsense. They're lying to us. They're lying to every single person in this country about what they're doing. That's what's going on. And they, they're going to have to imprison the lot of us because we're not going to accept this kind of criminality that is going on at the highest so, levels so what, of government. What, what is the next stage of your actions? For example, uh, somebody on Twitter has asked me to put this to you. Ask your guest if it's true that insulate protesters are hitting the roads around Gatwick Airport tomorrow. Rumours on social media says they are. Would you like, I would like to know, please. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny that. So that's a yes, then. <laughs> No, I don't know where they're finding that out, that information out. They know more than the police. Well, the police might know now. Maybe. Um, but are you intending to ramp up these protests again? Because there's been a bit of a lull over the last couple of weeks, hasn't there? Unfortunately, this is the unfortunate thing that the UK public have to understand, is that groups like Insulate Britain are going nowhere. And the reason for that is not an ideological one, OK? It's this physical reality that exists. We saw earlier this year that record level temperatures um, in, in the Middle East. We, we saw in Vancouver um, last week a road being completely swept away uh, by flooding um, that's going on in Canada at the moment. We saw tube stations in London flooded. We saw Tower Bridge closed as well this year. We're going to see flash flooding. We're going to see heat waves. We're going to okay. see the, the all, kinds of extreme of weather you're, you're, events you're over not, the next few years. You're not answering my question. Uh, as, uh, well, no, uh, I am trying to. What I'm saying is that Insulate Britain and groups like it are only going to grow. And that's because of the physical reality in, not the ideological no. sit, uh, you know, but stance are, that we're are taking. You, are you going to um, ramp up the exact same kind of protests? Or are you thinking of new ways of protests? Protesting. You think, well, we've done the M25, we've done the gluing to the road and all the rest of it, let's do something new. Because otherwise people are going to get rather bored with you, frankly, aren't they? We are, we are, we are in a new paradigm where the, the, the kinds of protests that we've seen over the last 30 years have not worked. Carbon emissions have gone up globally by 60% over the last 30 years. And to be quite frank with you, there is a group of citizens that have had enough. Yeah, and we're going to do whatever it non-violent... You, 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 you're, you're now reverting to saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, you haven't answered Phil's question about the Chinese embassy. You're not answering my question. I have answered it. I said this is about honour and integrity, and we're here to speak into the UK government to get them to reduce emissions immediately, which is our global responsibility, and that's what we're going to continue to do. And yes, acts of civil resistance... Campaigns that we've seen Insulate Britain um, undertaking will continue in 2022 and they will get bigger because people have had enough. But you're not going to protest outside the Chinese embassy because 
well, I don't know why I don't know why you wouldn't. To my mind, that they they cause twenty eight percent of the world's carbon emissions, and yet you seem to think that they should get a free pass. Well, we're about we've we've got an energy crisis at the moment, haven't we? We've got a fuel crisis. We've saw around ten thousand people freezing to death in their homes yeah, over again, the last few diverting. years. No, we, I'm talking about the reality. I mean, do, the, do the Chinese government have a responsibility to stop thousands of our elderly from freezing to death in their homes? Is that the Chinese government's responsibility? No, they've got responsibility to the world. They've got responsibility to their own people. And I'd have thought that was a pretty obvious thing for you, point for you to make. You and don't, that's, you don't and seem to be wanting to criticise them at all. Why would I criticise the Chinese government? I'm a UK <laughs> I, citizen. I have just, well, I've just told you why. Because they create 28% of the world's emissions. And I've just said to you that half of the stuff that we buy in this country mm. and that we consume is from China. So the emissions that you say how great we've been is a complete nonsense and a lie. Well, because the emissions that are embedded in those things we buy... Um, you know, those emissions are there. They're in this computer so screen no in front of me. criticism of China, Russia, Brazil. Yeah, this is a global problem. Um, and we need, we, need, we need civil resistance movements around the world to, 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 to spring up and to, to, to create change and reduce emissions. But just to say that, that these um, country like India, for example, you know, it's, been, uh, it's got a lot less um, historic emissions than the UK has. It's got a lot less to blame. We well, we we're talking, we consume... about, we're talking about now. Yeah. So so there's a if, but if, but if, a, if a country no... is using uh, coal to to for for most of its energy sources, and that you I mean you would presume you think it's a good thing that the British government has effectively got out of coal completely. But do you so th therefore would you not want the Indian government and the Chinese government to to do that? Would you not want to criticise them for the fact that their decision at COP twenty six to effectively water down the commitment on coal that was a bad thing? Well, look, Britain have a responsibility historically. You're a historian, Ian. Yeah, I know. I'm not talking about history. I'm well, talking why not? about India and China. Now, why not? Well, you keep trying to answer his question that I haven't answered. Well, we, we, we only just finished paying in 2008 uh, um, uh, the money that we owed to the United States, right? So, is it so? Do we just What's say, got to do with the well, do we fish? just say the history doesn't matter? We don't owe you the money anymore. Well, that, well I'm not I'm not having that discussion with you. I no, want but to know you're why saying you're that so it doesn't really, matter. I'm, Historic I, emissions I just find don't it matter. It's interesting that, that you don't seem to be concerned at all about the amount that India, China, Russia, and Brazil are emitting. And you're far more concerned with the fact that the British government has actually, actually got quite a good record on this, but you won't no, you keep even say, do, do, do you get any funding record. from China for you, Insulate you, Britain? You, you keep saying we've got a good record, and that is a mystery truth ian well have we cut emissions more than any other european country apart from sweden not if answer, you include yes not if you include answer, yes not if you include the goods that we buy from china. you're not listening to me I i'm listening to but you. i'm saying the goods that we buy from china india brazil all the stuff that we get from there has an emission value attached to it yeah and all the but stuff that they buy from us does as well well i don't think to do, the do, same do, extent does, does we insula, don't we does don't produce britain much get in any this foreign country funding we don't produce much in this does, country does insulate anymore. britain get any foreign funding no not that i'm aware of good 840 <laughs> this is LBC.
Leading Britain's conversation. Ian Dale. Tweet at LBC. 8.52 on LBC. We have made an executive decision and we're changing the running order of the show yet again. Sorry to confuse people, but Liam has agreed to stay till quarter past nine and then we will talk about this statement from Boris Johnson on his talks with Emmanuel Macron. So let's go to Chris in Richmond. Hello, Chris. Good evening. Um, Liam, how would you feel if it was your mother or father, child, sister, family, relative, stuck on the M25, not being able to get to hospital while that person was potentially dying? Because yeah, of your protest. Yeah, I'd, I'd feel terrible about that, Chris. But you're, also, but you're potentially stopping that. There's been at least one example of a woman desperate, desperate to get to see her mother in hospital. I find it disgusting that you even think it's, <laughs> that it's acceptable to block people going to get emergency services. People are going to die en route because of your stupidity. Do you not understand that? Is it really not difficult to understand? Yeah, it is. Um, I do understand where you're coming from. And what I find disgusting is that the British government are continuing to put carbon no, no, in the atmosphere. No, no, forget about the British government. Forget about the British government. If it was your mother sitting in that ambulance dying, how would you feel? Tell me. I've Tell just me said to you, Chris, how I'd feel. So you, would, you wouldn't care? You'd say, well, actually, you I'd, might No, I just said to you, I'd feel terrible. Die, can't you? I just said to you I'd feel terrible about it. And no, I'd... you wouldn't, because you've probably not been in that situation. It's not impacted you personally. There are people waiting hours for ambulances in this country. I mean, hours. Yeah, I mean, we've had an Do example. We've had that? an example of the um, ambulances being stuck outside a hospital for six hours, yeah, unable to get in. No, no, and no, no, and no. there's there's where's the outrage at the government for that? Well, there is plenty of outrage. Well, I'm not sure that there is. I think there's been more outrage at Insulate Britain, to be quite honest with you. No, it's not a zero-sum game. It is not a competition. If people are desperately trying to get to hospital because they are going to die if they don't get them in time, and you guys block it, you are responsible for their death. Do you not grasp that? Yeah, but but what I'm saying to you is is that Chatham House, one of the most respected organisations, have put out a report that say that we're 95% certain to go over 2 degrees C. Now, that means millions of people will suffer, Chris. Millions yeah, but, of people are going to die. You blocking the M25 is going to change diddly squat. Well, that's your it? stance, and, and, and we differ on that, because what we're trying to find is a critical mass number of people that go into resistance against the government and say that we're, we're not willing to put up with this, and but we're willing to more, go to many, prison. Okay. How many people is it going to take to be blocked from getting to hospital to see their loved ones dying, people dying in ambulances as a result of your protest? What's your acceptable number? 100? 200? 10,000? What's your upper limit? Just to be very clear about this. No. You've I'm, been very sanctimonious about it, but you haven't given us I, an answer. I'm not being sanctimonious with you, Chris. Of course you are, because it's not here you that. I lost my mother two weeks ago. Luckily, I'm she sorry, wasn't blocked mate. on M25 on the way to the airport. I took to the hospital, I mean. But, but the reality is there are people who are in that situation. Yeah. I mean, I, I should explain. Chris is a regular caller. Yeah. He, he's a, a Liberal Democrat voter, mm. um, has green tinges. I think I can describe you as having green tinges to you, Chris, can't I? Within um, reason, though. Within reason. So, I mean, he is, he is not your sort of ranting right-wing Tory having yeah. a go at you on this. This is somebody who ought to be very sympathetic to you. Yeah. I, all I can say is that we're hitting worst case scenarios in terms of extreme weather events. And the next 10 or 20 years, Chris, are going to be catastrophic, OK? Catastrophic to every single person in this country. And what, you know, those people that are getting caught up in that traffic jams, we're actually trying to save them too. I know it's really difficult to accept. How are you, how are you going to save them if they've just had a stroke or a heart attack, or they've had COVID and they're rushed to hospital and they're not breathing. How is that going to work? You've just, you've just, you've just Chris, you were Chris, argument in the last 30 seconds. Chris, I think you, you're being... You can't save I, someone I think, if you block Chris, the hospital. Chris, most of the... I've been on these um, actions, OK? Blue lights are always let through. Ambulances are always let through. I accept there's been one or two um, examples where there's been some horrible things happen, and I accept that. But people generally have been able to get to where they need to get to in emergencies. This is being stoked up by the media, Chris. Blue lights well, are let through. Ambulances are let through. This is what's, you know, people are able to get being, to where they want to with, in emergencies. With, with respect, it's not being stoked up by the media. Where an ambulance hasn't got through, um, it's all been verified from the, the family concerned. It's, I, I think you do yourself a disservice Ian, when Ian, you say that. Ian, th- to be quite honest with you, that caller that called in, we've never heard anything from them since and we don't know who that woman was, OK? So that hasn't been verified. I accept that it could have happened and we feel terrible about it, but it has never been verified. And we've done freedom of information requests, or they have been done, to the ambulance service about 
um, ambulances. Have there been any ambulances held up by protests in London? And the answer has come back no. OK, so you can do these freedom of information requests yourself to the ambulance services. Ask them, have any ambulances been stopped? And they'll say no. That's the information that we've been getting mm -hmm. back. And that's because we've been letting blue lights through. So this is like this kind of furor about um, people getting um, stuck. I, I don't think it adds up All right. um, to the to the to the kind of uh, extent. that. Chris OK, is Chris, thank saying. you. Uh, Michael is in Ellesmere. Hello, Michael. Uh, hi, Ian. Hi, Liam. Uh, hi, thanks mate. for what you're doing, Liam. And uh, thanks for your show, Ian. You're pretty good for a right winger. <laughs> I'll take that. That's what I think. <laughs> um, I was uh, going to say, yeah, it kind of relates to the previous caller a bit because um, I think your movement is a bit of a gift to um, a government that's kind of floundering. You know, they always look for victims, someone to point their finger at. They kind of, you know, prime minister who's economically illiterate and who keeps saying in the corridors of power, let the bodies pile high, which is his answer. Well, hang, on, hang on a second. First of all, he's denied ever saying that. You say he keeps saying <laughs> that. I mean, let's stick to the facts, Michael. He was alleged okay, to have said okay. that. OK, OK. So let's say uh, insulated Britain has an impact on GDP because of they could call it ideology. We call it reality. And there's a prime minister who just ruins certain industries because of his ideology. And I think, how do you, as uh, a protester, how do you cope with the fact that they use you as a scapegoat to hide all these things? Like, he can stop hundreds of ambulances going in, have problems, massive okay. problems in all healthcare, right. and he points to you and says, look, insulate Britain. Do you have any so response? Do you, do you think that effectively what Michael is saying, you're being used as a dead cat by the Prime Minister saying, we've got all of these terrible problems and I'm not coping with them very well. Oh, by the way, look over there. Look at these insulate Britain people. Mm. Uh, is that, do you think you are being used? Um, maybe, yeah. Maybe that's that's going on a little bit but i think what falling you... into an evil tory trap <laughs> i think what yeah apparently we're all actors that's the uh oh really Is yeah apparently right? so yeah yeah, yeah 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 um but what i think is is that you know what what insulate britain and groups like it do is we move the overton window right so we move the conversation we're about to go into a winter it's very cold at the moment we're um going into an, a, a fuel crisis in terms of energy prices and over the next few months what i predict you'll see is this um fuel poverty issue will be okay. much more talked about than it was right before. we're going to talk about some more things in the next 15 minutes liam's going to stay for an extra 15 minutes oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three you're listening to lbc i'm ian dale it's nine o'clock on your radio on global player and play lbc leading britain's conversation this is lbc From Global's newsroom at nine o'clock, Boris Johnson has written a letter to French President Emmanuel Macron to set five steps to prevent migrant crossings in the Channel. It's after 27 people died making the journey from France to the UK yesterday as their boat capsized. Measures such as joint patrols and more advanced technologies have been recommended. French politician Frank Dersan says something needs to change. It's a dream for all these guys. They have family in England. And when I ask to migrants, do you want to stay in France? They say, no, no, we want to go to uh, England because the paradise is in England. Police have been given more time to question a man suspected of the murder of Bobby Ann McLeod. The 18-year-old disappeared on Saturday evening after leaving her home to meet a friend in Plymouth. Officers say there's no known link between the teenager and a 24-year-old man who's being questioned. Downing Street says it's disappointed about a planned blockade on the Channel Tunnel in the port of Calais tomorrow. Fishermen in France are protesting at what they consider as Britain's failure to issue enough licences to allow them to access UK waters post-Brexit. Anyone arriving in the UK from South Africa will be tested for a new variant of coronavirus, which officials describe as the worst seen so far. From noon tomorrow, six African countries will be added to the red list. Flights will be temporarily banned and UK travellers will need to quarantine 59 countries. 
cases have been identified across South Africa, Hong Kong and Botswana. LBC's Westminster correspondent Ben Kentish has more. It's being called B11529. It's the number I'm afraid we will probably be hearing more about. That variant has 32 mutations in it compared to the strains that we are more typically used to, even Delta. Now that means that it'd be because of that number of mutations, it would be expected to behave differently. But it also raises the prospect, the very real prospect, I'm afraid, that it would be better able to evade our immune system. Prince William has announced a mental health support package for emergency service workers. The joint approach has been set up to help staff with both past and present as well as their families. The Duke of Cambridge opened up about his own struggles as an air ambulance pilot during the announcement. In the city, the FTSE 100 closed up 24 points at 73.10. The pound buys $1.33 and €1.18. LBC weather, wet and windy in the northwest tonight, mostly clear elsewhere with a low of 1. Very unsettled across the UK tomorrow with storms force winds possible in the north. A mixture of sunshine and blustery showers elsewhere with a high of nine degrees. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm David Dom. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Ian Dale. Hello, a very good evening. It's three minutes past nine on LBC. Just following up what David said in the news bulletin there on this new South African variant, South Africa is now set to be placed on the travel red list because of the concerns about this so-called super variant. Uh, it's described as the worst threat to the vaccine programme seen so far. Sajid Javid, the health secretary, has just tweeted this. The UK HSA is investigating a new variant. More data is needed, but we're taking precautions now. From noon tomorrow, six African countries will be added to the red list. Flights will be temporarily banned and UK travellers must quarantine. We'll have more on that uh, later in the evening, I'm sure. Uh, Liam Norton from Insulate Britain is with me in the studio. He's going to take some more of your calls up until quarter past nine. Then we're going to talk about this um, statement that Boris Johnson issued a little earlier, which you heard about again in the news bulletin. It's all about what Britain is suggesting to France as to the future of the, the cooperation between the two countries and I'm wondering if you think this will be enough. Uh, we'll give you all the details after quarter past nine. How are you faring up, Liam? Yep, I'm good. feeling good. Right, let's carry on with uh, Dan in Southwark. Hello, Dan. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. What would you like to say? Oh, yeah. As an emergency service worker, although uh, you might be able to go on the Freedom of Information Act and and actually see whether or not ambulances and stuff have been affected. Um, people still have to commute to get to their emergency service job roles, whether or not they're in the police, fire brigade, or ambulance service, or NHS staff. So although you might not physically um, held up traffic for ambulances that are on their way to, to hospital, what you have done, and you have to admit you have done this, is stop people from getting to their place of work, which it, their job is entitled to, to save people's lives, like my, me included. And another point that I'd also like to make is the facts and things that you keep talking about, Liam. Yeah, well and good, they're true. Obviously, climate's changing, and we all have to do our part. However, Britain alone can't do it alone. Everyone needs to get involved. So if you're not going and knocking on China's door, Russia's door, and making them make the point, we ourselves are not going to make the difference by ourselves. Everyone needs to get involved. So you specifically targeting this country and this country alone isn't going to solve the problem. It's a global problem. The number goes up around the world, not just for our country and our country alone. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, and I want to, you know, applaud you for, for the work that you do. Um, yeah, you look, sound like Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, I, I accept that there's a consequence to disruption. This is an awful situation we're in, and getting change is not, you know, it's never morally pure, right? And there's about to be a tube strike. So along those lines that you're using, they're going to stop people like yourself from getting to work. But but over the years... But people they're known have... beforehand. We get those information beforehand. You get told about when to Yeah, going yeah, to no, work. I accept. We don't I... get told when we're on our well, way to well, work. Well, to be fair, we did say, we did, we did announce that we were going to be going onto the motorways of the UK, Dan. So we have announced it publicly beforehand. So, so we every, have announced every it. Every road on the, every motorway in the UK. Well, well this is the most important. Yeah, work. yeah, this is the most important issue humanity has ever faced. 
So proportionately, what we're saying is, is that it's justifiable. Now, accept that people will disagree with that. And that's why we're prepared to take the consequence in terms of arrest and imprisonment. And on, on, on the second point, that Britain can't do it alone. I mean, I've, I've answered this question about three or four times, that we have a responsibility and, and, and I accept that uh, countries around the world will need to change and what we need is civil resistance from people all around the world to force their you, governments you, you to change. You doing this to this country and this country alone isn't going to make a change. Well, I'm a, change. I'm, I'm a UK citizen, Dan, and I take responsibility for my no, own government. No, you're a citizen of the world. Yes, and yeah. citizens of the well, world need to start going into civil resistance yeah, but you're against their governments. you're one specific country alone. No, I live in, not, I live in the UK, so that's why I'm focusing on, on the UK. But now. the UK Hey, if we do it ourselves, isn't going to make a difference. Dan, we need the entire globe Dan, to, to make a difference. Yeah, and that's why we need civil resistance movements all around the world to force change. So what are you doing in order to change that? I'm doing uh, what I can here in the UK. So are you are you talking to people abroad? Are you making other, uh, other initiatives around the world? Yeah, it's all going on, Dan. It's all going so, on. There's stuff so, in so, Germany, France... Um, Holland. And you're in contact with? Yeah. Okay, great. They're the countries that are already involved in trying to make a difference. But Australia. what about places like China uh, and Russia? What have you got? What have you, have you talking to anyone over there in order to try and change? Uh, change there, is, there are some Chinese people that we're talking to. It's obviously a very sensitive situation in terms of the consequences for those people. But yeah, we need to have faith. But then why don't why aren't you publicising that? It's all well and good of you saying that, but unless there's facts and figures, what you could be saying is all hearsay. Dan, the British government have a responsibility to their people Everyone when has they're a failing. Responsibility, Liam. Everyone. Yeah. Yep. Not just the British government. Every yeah. single human being. You're I not, completely you, with, all, with all due respect, what, what, Dan, what you're, you're, not, you're not listening the to whole... what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying that what we need is movements like Insulate Britain all over the globe. That's what we need. But I can't be in two places at once, mate, can I? No, I, no. I can only I be here in the UK. Two places at once, but then when you're not going outside the Chinese embassy and sticking to them, the same message that you're trying to stick to this country, it's a bit of um, contradiction, don't you think? And no. saying that you're quite happy to... to say this to one government but you're too afraid to say it to another right well we, we could have this debate for yeah a, i mean i've a, answered a the china time, question about I, five I think times. i'm going to leave it there dan if you don't mind because i want to squeeze a couple more in before quarter past uh, peter is in shrewsbury hello peter hello ian Hi. peter here go ahead i'd just like to say to your chappy there that there's been two at least two initiatives in the last 20 years, or perhaps 25 years, I think Margaret Thatcher's time, I think uh, Cameron, where Internet Britain was, was a national thing and they were ringing up every man and his dog to find out if you wanted any. My mother's house was done down in a little place called Nailsey near Bristol. I live in a four-bedroom detached house up here in Shrewsbury, and they've done my loft with another, another eight eight inches of uh, glass fibre, um, pump my cavity wall. Okay, um, okay. You know, what's so your question, Peter? The, 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 the question is, he's an electrician on building sites. What does he think the solution is? What sh he can just say insulate Britain, but he must have some practical thoughts because he, he is putting his... He's installing cables behind skirting boards <laughs> and see what's being done. He knows done. the trade. Hey, eh? You know the trade. You're, you're, you, you see what buildings are like now, how, how houses are being built. Yeah. So tell me what the solution is. Well, we're still building houses with gas boilers. Uh, we're building 250,000 houses a year that we will have to go and retrofit at a later date. It's a complete insanity. Um, what's going on in so terms what, what of the building industry um, like we can use uh, heat, heat pumps yeah heat pumps solar um, there's there's all kinds of ways that we can build much better there's 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 uh, ways that we can build in a much more um, you know sustainable so have you, have way you in terms of energy in your house? I haven't unfortunately no gas boiler oh dear <laughs> I know I'm terrible no <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, well, I'm you, skint. You have Ian. admitted to being a hypocrite. Yeah, I mean, things, I mean, what you? else can you do? You know, I'm I'm skint, and what we're saying it's an interesting point because we're saying working class people can't have an opinion um, on their children's future. No, I'm not saying. No, that no, at I all. know you're not. No, I'm not saying. I'm not laying that down on you. But what I'm saying is that a working class electrician who drives a diesel van who has to live in this society uh, to provide for their children for them to say we need to do something on climate change according to the media he's a hypocrite because he drives a diesel van that isn't right see i'm greener than you i got an electric car last week yeah 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 well you want a few more quid than me Ian, to be fair yeah, yeah. as my producer just said in my ear you're also really yeah, thank you very much robbie you're sacked um right peter thank you for that let's go to zelda in totten in hampshire somewhere i've never heard of hello zelda <laughs> <laughs> Near Southampton it is. Sounds lovely. Um, yes, hello Ian and Hi. Um, Liam. Hi I'd there. just like to thank you for the programme. I've learnt an awful lot from what you've said, Liam. Thank you and so much. I'm not, I'm not as brave as you and I'm elderly, but I have been vegetarian and vegan for 33 years. Oh. And I do promote, um, you know, plant-based Based <laughs> plant based food and um, plant based milk. Um, so I'm hoping that that's saving a lot of this emissions, you know, from the cows and that. And I understand that there are some firms now feeding the cattle differently so they don't make so much <laughs> noise. <laughs> Very delicately put, Zelda, if I may say so. Yeah, I mean, I'm on the same journey. Like, uh, you know, before I started, uh, up until 2018, um, I was incredibly ignorant of all this stuff. Um, and it took, uh, you know, public disruption for me to sort of wake up to it. Um, and I've been on a similar journey of, um, you know, starting off to eating less meat, to eating no meat, um, to stopping dairy, trying to do what we can. So have you become a vegan? I'm not quite a vegan yet. Struggle with that one. Yeah, you're not, cheese, al- you're not alone in that. It's cheese. Vegan cheese is what some of the most disgusting <laughs> things. In fact, the smell is even worse than the taste. But yeah. there you go. So, um, you know, I've still got loads to, to work on on, on an individual um, level. Can, um, can I ask but this you a is question? about systemic change. What we need is systemic okay. change from everybody, uh, from all governments. When you, I mean, people who you work with um, on, in your day job, what do they think of what you do? Do, do they think. You're a bit weird. Uh, I think they do. I mean, like the old, um, because I used to be a contractor, you know, on much bigger sites. And I stopped that um, back in 2019. So I've just been doing like um, bits and pieces um, for friends on much smaller level kind Mm. of building sites. But I just had a text to my old boss, actually, because there's a band that that I'm going to go and see next week. And he watches them, too. So he's going to go. I just said, are you going? Um, and he just and we haven't really spoke much since the campaign, but he just said, oh, I've been following your television interviews. And I was like, oh, what do you think? And he was like, you know, quite. Uh, yeah, he was uh, complimentary. Cause, so cause you, I mean, you come across very level headed, but you say you only really went on this journey in 2018. And there's this saying, well, there's the, the, there's nothing so zealous as a convert. Hmm. And you, you kind of got that air about you. you kind of got religion on it, haven't you, if you see what I mean? Well, I think it does, it, 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 it airs into the realm of, 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 of spirituality. I think that's definitely true. Because what we're talking about here is is existential. And yeah, I'm an ordinary bloke on a, from building sites. But what I live with every day, Ian, is... The, I, I've connected the, the, these numbers, this 2.4 degrees, it's not just a number. I can foresee the reality of the suffering that's going to take place. And it's it's horrifying place to be on a day to day level. So there's a spiritual element of sort of like okay. trying to live in the day, live in the moment and trying to do what's right. This is about doing what's morally right. I, I see little children in the supermarket and i want to break down in tears because i think about their future and what's in store for them and it is horrific unless we can do something and i believe that as a country we can come together pull together and get on with the job just um a quick reaction to this police are apparently appealing for anyone who missed me- <clears throat> sorry who missed medical appointments or work hours during the insulate britain protest to come forward uh, so, sorry <coughs> Essex police say they're investigating disruption caused by your organisation. What's your reaction to that? Be good if they would start looking into some of the corruption going on by our government, um, some of the criminal 
malpractice that's going on, some of the stuff that's being pumped into our rivers. On the, the face of it, that seems extraordinary. Even I find that extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a waste of police time, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I've been arrested for conspiracy for doing media appearances. I've been arrested after... For conspiracy? Media- yeah. How, how so? Because, um, because apparently I'm... Because the media was saying that I'm the leader of an organisation, I, I got arrested afterwards um, for conspiracy to cause a public nuisance. And what happened? Well, I've been then? released under investigation, but you know, I'm sure me saying that I've been working on the Insulate Britain campaign for the last 10 months is evidence to the police that I'm part of the So do you, do you fear that you're going to be charged with something? Well, I'm on the list of people that have broken the injunction, which is quite frankly a disgrace legally that we had seen this privatisation of the legal system. We could have been charged with criminally, but we're being brought with private charges um, by Highways England and we're seeing people currently we're seeing pe- nine people in How prison. How is privatising their public body? Well the, the privatisation of public roads we're, we're saying that we're trespassing and we can't go in, onto a public road in order to um, express ourselves um, and, and we're seeing nine people doing uh, six month prison sentences without a jury that's what's going on at the moment. There's currently another nine people about to be processed and I'm expecting to be um, called in at a later date to be one of those people as well. But, you know, this is a worrying time, but we, we accept this is what's required at this moment in history. We need to go into civil resistance, which means people will fight back at you. Um, but yeah, it's very worrying time in terms of uh, civil liberties at the moment. Uh, Josh says, Ian, he drives a diesel car, he has a gas boiler and eats meat. Pull him up, you're giving him an easy ride. Don't eat meat, don't eat meat. Well, he just did explain that he's given up meat. Um, I, I, it's nothing to do with... And I with don't the, drive a diesel it's, car It's either. nothing, well, diesel van. No, it's, I don't actually. Well, you just said you did. No, I said other electricians and tradesmen oh, I thought, that I do. I thought you said you did. No, yeah. Anyway, it's nothing to do with an easy ride. People can make up their own minds. I, I've got Liam in here so he can put his viewpoint to you i've asked questions you've asked questions and everyone listening can make up their own minds liam i hope you've enjoyed it yeah thanks in uh you know i feel like it's been robust and i appreciate all the callers um it's really good to get an opportunity to speak to the british okay. public which i think is important thank you for coming in